Hello and welcome to a new episode of Q Life. Today we're going to do some interior, some exterior, some farms, uh, one farm. So let's start at the farm so we can produce some stuff while we're building the rest. And I want to build it, that's the wrong button, over there. So in this wall we built the farm. And this farm is mainly for the bone meal. So I keep running out for the moss farm and just put two, moss, two bone meal all the grass. I just keep running out of bone meal. And it's gonna be a pumpkin and mana farm. Because we also don't have, don't have one yet. And I do keep building with it. For some reason. I keep putting it as, well, storage things. Maybe I think because it's only one of the only things that's really storage. Except chests and barrels. But... I need to dig out space and put the farm in, so let me get some resources for the farm first, and then we'll dig it out. So I've got all the stuff now, I've restocked my gladstone sugar box, and I've got two sugar boxes where I can put some dirt and all the st stone in, which I mine out. And I'll be using fortune, because I'm running out of cobblestone, which is not great as I'm building with it, and it's used for all the redstone supplies. Um, I'm pretty sure this is my last cobblestone. But while I'm making out, let's go to the Season 1 world, where I show you which design I'm using for the farm. And for the design we'll be using, we'll be using the same design as in my Season 1 world, because this is the Season 1 world of Cure Life, and this is my uh, base. I have no videos of this world. I only have a showcase, but uh, yeah, this is the farm we'll be, be making. Uh, it's or we'll make him approximately the same size because it works like a charm in this world. It's almost a constant flow of bone I think. So yeah, we'll be using that design. And the same size. Maybe a little bit smaller or we'll stretch it out in one way. But this is the design we'll be using. So, and yeah, I'll be making this one because it just produces a lot of bone meal. And now that there's a hole, we can start building the farm. I've chosen to it a nine by fifth, uh, an eleven by fifteen room. The one on the first seasons world is thirteen by thirteen, so this is like nine blocks small or four blocks smaller. Uh, well, it's it's less than ten blocks smaller, so this certainly will do. Now it's time to build the farm, so I think we should first. Get in the rails, then the dirt, and then the pistons and the observers. Or first observers and pistons, and then the dirt. Let's first put in the, my, the rails, and then we can start thinking about the rest. And the, all the rails are in, so it just zigzags all the way to the end, and then bounces back. And then it comes to here, we have a minecart unloader, which is over here, so compared to reach the hopper, but it's the minecart's on top of. It goes into the and torch behind this block and goes into the repeater. So when the hopper gets an item, the torch gets empowered, the repeater gets empowered, and the minecart stops until there is nothing in the minecart anymore. So the hopper is empty then and it turns back on. And also, when there's stuff in the hopper, The distortion on, turns on, and the servers are pushed into each other, which means all the stuff gets spit out. And this will be a water column going up. But that's uh, about it for this. It's not the best way to do this. Preferably, you have a hopper clock, or a, no, not hopper clock, uh, a battery like the dropper, and then when there's something in the dropper powering it. But that won't fit because then you're powering or the hopper and here will be a water stream. So that's just not going to work, unfortunately. So this is the best way. It, you do get a lot of clicks. But with this done, I think we should put the top redstone in first. Because you need to place them from down here and then the whole business we need to place from down here. And the hoppers, the observers from on top. And if you already have the dirt in you, you need to crawl through it all, so let's don't do that. We'll do that at the end. So let's take the, oh, the pistons and the observers. 
And on top there will be some node blocks and some brown wool. Now all the redstone is in, so we have this grid, and I will have to remove some surface for the water sources because so we don't need those. But it all works. So as you can see, if I put a block there, the pistons extend, and I started putting the dirt in. And I hope that if I till this land, uh, the light shines through. I need to figure out where to place the water. I don't think it will get reached all the way to the end because I think I just made it just too long. I think it can spread four blocks to this either side. I really hope I am wrong and it's five because I've it's eleven by it's eleven white. But yeah, I will try. So I need one. I certainly need one in the middle. So. Either way, so let's try that first. And uh, then I need to gather some uh, pumpkin and melons. Because I don't have any seeds here. And with all the pumpkins and melons in two, like this. We need to wait for them to grow. But we can put the minecart in. Close that off, close that off. And let's put some glass in here. Even though I'll probably not be back here. But now I can at least look into the farm. But let's now focus on the second part of the thing. Because on last season I didn't sort the pumpkins and melons. But this season I definitely want to. So otherwise it becomes a mess. Especially when you need to craft melon slices into melon blocks. So there will be some... Out that, that, that's also why the, out the elevators here. So it will lift the pumpkins and melons up. And it goes into water stream over the hoppers and then into the outsorters. So let's put that in, but I'll wait for them to grow and then we can see if it actually produces and what how much it produces. And we now have the storage and it's all working. As you sometimes can see items are flying in. So we're starting to get melon slices and pumpkin is almost there. So this is just a standard uh, item sorter. So this one is for the pumpkins and this one is for the melons. And if it ever overflows it goes into a uh, composter and then into bone meal, but that should be that's not placed correctly. Like so. And now stuff is flying into the air. That will be fixed uh there's a building around it. But this seems to be working, which is great. And so yeah, there will be some windows into the chute as well. But it's time to put a building around it. And I'll probably make a secret entrance to the back here. Well, not, maybe not that secret. But there will be an entrance to the back probably. And what is a better way to put a pumpkin and melon farmer in than a barn? So this will be a barn and there will be a wheat field next to it. As we also don't have a crop field yet and I do want that in the village. So this is the middle of the barn I think. So it will extend to probably somewhere like here. Uh, and there will be a like a silo tower on the sides for the water column. Uh, that's the sign. And now it's just time to build it. And it's now all done. At least the farm is. And I've also built these two bridges over here. So I have now this little bridge which will be connected with a path to the other bridge. And there may be some path over there, but I have not assigned the building that will be there in between. But you have this small path along the water with the wheat field, with a scarecrow, a wheelbarrow, this torch. And then you come to this graveyard and you can go over this stone bridge, which fits the vibe of the graveyard more. Now, I need to do something about the river bed, but that will be for later. And so you can see with the silo, with the fence gates and the glass, so you can see the water. And when you go inside, we have a second story, but we have first, and here are the pumpkins and the melons. And we've got quite a lot, it's been one and a half hours approximately. So, we've got quite a lot, 
Yeah, it's got some Romeo. And up here with some wheat and I have a mini Mkamela farm. Just for show. It does work, but it's just for show. This, of course, would never be enough. As you can see, you get the items fly past. That's this building done. We'll ignore this side. We'll just put some stuff here, but that's we have later. Now it's time to focus on a different part of the village. And now it's time to finally fill up this space. And this space over here. And let's do that in the form of a time lapse. And that is all much better. So we now have a salmon over here with the mill on this side. And uh, so this is a small mill. This is really difficult to make. But I think this works quite nicely. And then it goes inside over here. But you have this rotating uh, belt thing which rotates this oak and then the saw. That's the ID. So then they can put the lock on here and then just slice it up. And then they've put the stuff over here on the outside. This is the fresh logs. These are cut logs. And there's some storage and some barrels with all the salt dust. That's and here's the rack for tools. I kind of like it. We just need some armor stands in here or something like that. And we also have this these two towers now. It does, and it's short enough so that it doesn't really block the castle completely when you walk out. But it, then it hides it again, and then you have a new reveal of the castle as soon as you walk under it. And it just adds a bit more story. Like you can't, they guard it at night, and you can't just go up to the castle. So I'll ignore that you can just walk around the tower. But this one doesn't have an interior yet. It's just two stories per tower. So. Common thoughts we should put in here. I got how to make a nice interior for this. But yeah, there's two towers with a bridge on top, which you can also walk on. You go up all the way to the top. You are on the tower and you can walk down to the wall. And I kind of like how this area is now a bit filled. So that's this area done. And to also finish another thing. Is I I have now fully decorated and greenified the river. So if you take a walk around the river, along the river, ooh, I almost pushed the cat off. Uh, you can see that the whole river is now completely green and lush and looking quite nice. And I've got bamboo, a string on the bamboo there. Yeah. All the way along completely to the end of the river where it now stops. So if I will continue down somewhere that I've not designed that much. Uh and I will have just stopped it over here. Because it, to fill this area will take a long time still. But I like how this area turned out. Now we're really getting a kingdom to that we can rule. But yeah, to the Royal Kingdom, there's still one thing really important that's missing. 
and that is a throne room so it's time to build a throne room and we'll do it over here on top of the library so let's first start with some walls and some floor and a floor so we can then put in some decorations and a throne and we now have a space all done so this is the room where the throne will be so there will be a door and then at the end there will be a throne on a sli small podium and you have these small hallways to the side also with a stair up to this bridge but now it's time to do the interior and I have a good design for a throne and some things for the hallways so let's just do that and now if you open the door there it is so we have all these statues or like harnesses pointing at you when you come in and then you have the throne at the end and I've gone for the bamboo blocks because it kind of looks like gold but yeah it's close to getting the gold because this little gold is a bit much that's why it's hidden behind the trap doors and there's also some, some diamonds in the middle with a soft cushion I do like that and I kind of like the design so that's on this uh, podium and then you have the wall features bit repeated on both sides and again we have some waterfalls some water fountains at the end of the hallway and just some benches and paintings some shelves and I quite like how this looks and these benches are just functional so you can sleep in here we also have an energy chest in here so that's on some functional features but in the design I made I had a rock light up there and I do think I like that more so to end, to end the episode let's make a small frog light farm because I do want the frog light there and now we're in the nether let's see if the best thing still has the magma creep spawner you can uh, go and you can go too uh, let's see I thought it was one with a middle thing, at least I hope. <laughs> yes. The question is, does it still have the Magma Cube spawner? Let's go carefully down. And let's kill the... We can go. Um. Yes, it still has the Mega Cube Spawner. Um, let's get out of its range. So, we want to secure that. With some stone blocks. So, no Mega Cubes can spawn. And then we can start filling in the stuff and I didn't bring enough blocks. And I didn't bring my arm my and the chest. So that's great. And no new magma cubes are spawning, so that's a good sign. Let's get rid of the middle bit over here. At least one of the layers. Uh, so we can have a nice layer over here on the ground level and now there's not a huge lava lake where I'm where we're working let's now carefully dig this place out I have filled in this area a bit but probably not completely so I just want to see it's layer for layer As you can see, there is some lava still, like there. 
which we need to fill in. Uh, the hole is now ready, so I'll place some rails in here, and then the rails will come up here to empty. There's the inventory into the chest, so that frog lights will be in there. Then we'll have a layer of basalt and some powdered snow, on, which will kill the bigger magma cubes. And I hope I this is the correct height, but underneath here is just a huge lava lake, so I'm not going to put stuff in there. As you can see, this is just all lava. So, uh, yeah, Bastion slot. So I'm not bothering with that. Now I've got everything ready, so let's make the farm. Now there's only one thing left to do. Or we can remove the, the stone to start the spawning of the magma cubes. And that is bringing in the frogs. And I think we can get uh, the yellow frog, the, or the hot biome, just in the nether. If you just feed it enough slime balls to do that dead pool, it will not uh, well, suffocate in the air. And the other ones we should get be able to get in the castle and in the village. So let's get some frogs let's first try to get the white one and if you look over here this is the meadow so we don't want that i think over here we're getting into snowy slopes that should be good and this is still snowy slopes yes it is then we'll build a small container here put the that ball in here and just spam it with slime balls. I give it a stack. I hope that's enough. I think it's way more than enough. Yes. That's our first frog. It's a green one. Wait. Oh yeah, that's that's right. Okay, let's come here. You let's go down to the village. And then over here somewhere. We'll do the same. Give it a stack of slime balls. And then we should get a a br orange brown one. Come on. Hey, don't hop away. There it is. Let's leech you. Let's get rid of the water. Now we have two frogs. Let's take these into the nether. And into this place. Yes, come in here. You stay in here. I'll get you the last one. Let's make a small container. And slime balls ready. Let's give them even more. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't die on me, please. Give him all the slime balls. Should be fine. Please. No, he died. Hey, hey, you say in. We need another one. Okay, let me figure. No, no, no. Let me figure this out. Okay, I know what to do now. Apparently, you have to feed the slime balls in the overworld and then catch it again, and then it keeps. Uh, the growth phase apparently it knows how far it is so we'll feed the stack of slime balls over here and when we fed the stack of slime balls we'll catch it again and then when we go to the nether let's keep get a water bucket again just in case. Let me go to the nether. You should just 
immediately go up, just like the others did after we fed the stack. So... Let's go into the bastion again. Ow. So now, let me put him in here. And keep our water bucket ready. Go up, you frog. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they missed it. Let's finish now. Sorry. Just kill this guy. You come in here too. Yes. And then we take some red glass ready. We just have to remove the stone, so let's first remove the pieces where the magma cubes don't spawn. Or they shouldn't spawn yet. I should be careful not to freeze. Okay, they all already spawned. And I hoped the chain would work up there. But apparently not. Well, maybe if I clear out these blocks. Uh, oh. That went. Ah. And the frog is out there, outside. This is all going horrible. Uh, you get lead again. You. There's a frog. Stupid frog. Get over here. You. Need to be. In here. With the others. Oh, I missed one. But we're getting the frog lights, which is great. Okay. It is the orange one that gives us the yellow. Okay. Other chaos. Uh, let's eat some more pork chop. Okay, it works now. That's great. If we stay and stand here. They spawn. They take freezing damage soon. Like there. And they take a lot of damage because they are fire mobs. And then they split into smaller cubes. And the frogs start eating them. And the minecart should pick everything up. There it is. Let's get picked up. Which is great. And then it should finally come up here. With all the stuff. Yes, that's great. Okay, we needed those. Hey! Okay, let's uh, take our stuff. Uh, and now we can climb up there. And change these out. I like that better. But let's also do it on this side. Let's just climb up here. And replace it. I especially like it on this side. It matches the throne more. But yeah. Now we have. A nice throne. But yeah. We cannot, cannot longer walk into in a knight's outfit so let's change that and this is much better now i'm dressed as a king and like i'm ready to rule the world uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did like subscribe share your feedback and i'll see you in the next one as this is the end a good bye